It's the L.A. Football Podcast. Touchdown Ram! Recovered by the Chargers. Touchdown UCLA! With USC great and NFL stud, Frosty Rucker. The Trojans back in front. And LAFB founder, Ryan Zyrood. On the Believe Podcast Network and LAFBnetwork.com. This is your destination for Los Angeles football. What's up, Los Angeles football fans, and welcome back to the LA Football Podcast here on the Believe Podcast Network. We are also on LAFBnetwork.com, your destination for Los Angeles football. Joined again, as always, by my co-host, two-time national champ at USC, 13-year NFL stud, Frosty Rucker. My man, what's going on? Hey, man, I'm happy, and um, I'm just excited. We got a great show today, man. You know, that beat was jumping. It always gets me going. And then, you know, the guests we got today, this is huge. Great guest. Yeah, he came through in the clutch frosty, pulling this one out. Um, I think all of you guys are going to love it. Um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, he's a knowledgeable guy. You're going to know him. He's the Rams defensive line coach. But, Frosty, I'll let you introduce him since he's a good pal of yours. Ryan, thanks for the alley-oop. I want everyone in L.A. to welcome our next guest. We are very fortunate to have Coach Eric Henderson, the defensive line coach for the Los Angeles Rams today. Coach E was our coach, Henny, as they call him, a.k.a. Coach Henny. He was a um, teammate of mine back in Cincinnati, and, you know, he once served as an assistant D-line coach at the Los Angeles Chargers, and now he is the defensive line coach for the Los Angeles Rams going on the second year. So everyone welcome Coach Eric Henderson. Absolutely excited to be a Ram, you know, just happy. You know, that's the best way to describe it. The energy here is just phenomenal and it's contagious. And when you walk into this building, I'm telling you, there's a different feeling. And to be a part of something like that and bring the energy that I already have, uh, I think it's just a, it's a great mesh. And I'm, I'm excited about that. And I just can't wait to get to work with the guys and, you know, uh, I'm excited about coaching Aaron Donald. Um, I was excited about coaching Joey Bosa and Melvin Ingram. I mean, you got some great players. I am truly blessed as a position coach to have uh, the opportunity to have an impact in all of these guys' lives. Well, Coach Eric Henderson, they call him Coach Henny. And I, I think that's that's what I love for you, you guys to know about Coach Eric Henderson. What's up, man? What's up? What's up, Ryan? What's up, Frost? He was popping. <laughs> Thanks for having me, man. I'm excited. Appreciate you guys. Absolutely. Thanks for coming on. I know you probably got a busy schedule, so glad. Uh, no, nah, it's not um, like training camps coming up. They're not busy. That's <laughs> that's messed up. Oh my God, no doubt. So, E, what's been going on, man? How how you been prepping for training camp coming up? You know, just been trying to stay safe, man. Uh, that's really been the the biggest mo. Uh, is making sure uh, you kind of check in with the guys from time to time that they're doing the things they need to do. Uh, from a safe standpoint and uh, just preparing, man. I, I, I'm so anxious to get back and excited and just hoping this thing that, uh, can, can work out. Uh, you know, I know there are some minute details that are still being ironed out, but uh, I'm just looking forward to it, you know, and, uh, you know, excited, man. <laughs> man. That's huge, man. As a, a former player, um, would you err on any caution playing without a concrete detail plan from the league? Or as a coach now, would you look at it a different way? No, I think, I mean, you know, everybody wants wants to play, you know, and but, I, you know, it, it, but there, there there's things that has to be worked out. You know, it's such a sensitive situation and topic to talk about, you know, so I, I'm not really going to, going, 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 you know, mess with that deal. But I mean, I, the, 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 the root of the issue is everybody wants to play, but we, do, you know, everybody wants to be safe as well. So it's one of those deals where, you know, that's, Figure out the best way that we can do it while we're compliant with with the you know uh, their their that's being asked of us as players and as coaches and uh, and figure out the best way to go about it and get it done you know and so that's, yeah yeah it seems like a difficult time yeah coach, coach you know uh, last thing at least for me about the whole COVID thing so I'm sure you're sick of talking about it. I'm sure you're sick of hearing about it but this offseason being as pre- unprecedented as it's been. What's been the challenges or has there been any silver linings with doing everything, you know, remote, not being able to get all the field access? Uh, what's been the biggest, I guess, you know, curveballs, but also something that maybe you've enjoyed by it? Right. You know, that's a really good question because, uh, you know, I was having this discussion with uh, a couple of the guys. Uh, one of the deals is just it, 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 what's been excellent about it is that you, got, you get a chance to go back to 
you know, uh, you know, for myself, one of the ways that I was brought up in coaching, you know, was utilizing the computer, you know, Zoom and PowerPoint and all of those things and, you know, a different way of being creative. And then, but I also enjoy the old school uh, style of coaching of just getting on the board and, 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 and doing it right in front of those guys. And that was something that I probably do a little bit more than uh, the PowerPoint and the Zoom now. And so not uh, having that uh, camaraderie of being around the guys and in a room was just totally different. You know, that audience, that feedback, that energy, you know, the passion and just being able to sometimes to show an example, hey, uh, stand up for me, right? You know, real quick. And then yeah, now you put can these do hands those things. <laughs> Let me show you what it feels like to jack his ass up, you know, from that yes, side. Sir. And so that those are the things that you miss, you know, uh, just that that personal connection with the guys. But uh, but we understand it, and you got to be able to adjust, you know. And in this league, man, you 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 got to be able to adjust, and you know. And so I think that's been good for us, uh, being able to utilize the Zoom and uh, PowerPoint and things of that nature, but still get some good quality work in. Uh, you know, I think the guys got better, even though that we weren't able to practice and 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 uh, and you know just be in front of those guys like that. But it was still really, really good. The setup that we had was awesome. My video department did an excellent job of making sure that we were squared away to do this thing from home. And in uh, a plan that Coach McVay put in place for us was just, it was phenomenal. So it was really like we, we didn't miss a beat, man. And so we're just excited to see how much of that uh, transfers over to you know, now uh, training camp and seeing what those guys are able to retain. We're excited to see how all that unfolds. Um, I was going to ask you that, how did Coach uh, McVay uh, lead throughout this whole pandemic? But, you know, you said it, he, he's done some great things and ironed it out. I don't yeah, really need to get detail and give away any, you know, advantages you guys have, you know, being the, the Los Angeles Rams. I don't want to touch on that. But, you know, I, I'm sure he, he's led you guys to where you guys are days uh, away from our training camp and in a positive note. Yeah, he's really good, you know, Frost. He he's, he's does a really good job of just from an organizational standpoint, making sure that everything is intact and that we're at, uh, the things that we're doing is, is truly seamless to uh, the coaches being able to function and uh, and as well as the players being able to to be receptive. But also understanding that you know things are going to be different, you know, and and and, and so it's not going to be perfect. So it makes no sense to hop on the things that are out of your control. Sometimes, I mean, shit. Somebody might not have internet. I mean, you may get disconnected. Well, right. I'm not going to chew a guy out, just get back in, you know? And so it's, you know, and, and things like that, you know, it was really, really cool. It was easy. And uh, we got some quality work done. You know, we had a new new defensive coordinator in uh, Brandon Staley. So we had to, uh, you know, truly uh, install a whole new defense. And so, uh, but we were able to get that done and we feel really good about it and uh, just excited, man. I'm glad you got a very a veteran group that's together that, you know, is very mature and, you know, they're actually diving into this stuff and not being distracted by it. So that's right. a good thing. No doubt. No yeah. doubt. Frosty, a little quick follow. Frosty and I were talking a little bit about this, you know, before we had you on. You know, I played a little bit of receiver in high school, so I have a, more, a little more offensive mind. So I can understand being down the field, you can still get into the X's and O's, the playbooks there. But on the defensive line, what – value can you have in these zoom calls that are not on the field work like what technical stuff can you really teach these guys from you know a video conference it's more you know on on film i think a lot of these guys learn you know uh by being able to see it anyway so if you can paint that picture for them right, and talk through blocking schemes and how things may develop and if we're not doing this then this can happen and so how critical it is to be able to still, um, you know, get that video coaching, you know, as well as drawing it for them, uh, doing it right in front of them. So, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's been, it's been good for us. It's been good for us. I mean, cause we would do the same thing had they been in, in the room as well. We would still have to kind of, you know, see it, uh, have to make cutups for them that are detailed in terms of, you know, what we're trying to get accomplished and, you know, from a playbook standpoint, this is why this is important, so so on and so forth. And so it don't necessarily stop or change your style of coaching. It just requires us to be more uh, PowerPoint or video oriented. But the coaching style and the things you want to get accomplished, we, were, we still feel comfortable from that standpoint.
Good. It's good to hear, man. Um, I'm sure all teams are having to adjust like this and to get this firsthand knowledge uh, from the Rams defense line coach, Eric Henderson. This is huge for us and our, our listeners. So I'm glad to have you on again. Uh, Eric, I wanted to uh, uh, talk to you about something. So you went from Chargers to the Rams in L.A. How was that transition, and did you have to physically move? You know, it was awesome. I did have to physically move because it was funny because when I first uh, was fortunate to get the job with the Chargers, you know, Coach Lynn was just awesome first and foremost, and that organization was a blessing to me and my career and the coaching staff down there. I mean, just great guys, you know, and I love everything about it. And so uh, I, when I came in, we were making a transition from San Diego to Orange County, you know, so it was like, oh, shit, should I buy a place in San Diego? And then I got to move again, so I'm not doing that. So I remember you called me. <laughs> you remember that? Yeah. And so I frost what I need to do, man. Where should I stay? So, you know, I did that, and then I get up to uh, Orange County, got settled in up there, uh, which was awesome, and uh, good facilities and, and, you know, to work out of up there in uh, Orange County. So that was good. Uh, I did have to move because of, you know, you obviously you just can't, you just can't commute two plus hours and the traffic here in LA, as everybody could imagine, is just off the chain, you know, and so even at five in the morning, it's serious. <laughs> and so uh, we, we had to move, but it was only a few hours up the road and, and, it, and it's awesome, man. Uh, you know, I, I love everything about it. I'm, I'm excited to uh, have been a part of both organizations. That price changes, doesn't it? That, oh, it definitely changed. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> oh my God. I mean that that was a big difference. You know, yeah. huge difference. What was so, the, you don't have to get too much away, but what was the biggest difference in I guess coaching parallels going from, you know, Anthony Lynn and Gus Bradley to then going to Sean McVay and Wade Phillips and now obviously you have Brandon Staley. What was the biggest transition in that? If um, it, you know, probably just the uh um the type of, uh, I'm sure I said this, just the, the age group of the staff, if you will, you know, whereas you got, you know, more of a veteran coaching staff or, and I don't even know, want to say veteran because you still got guys that's coached a long time in the league here with the, uh, with the Rams, but they, they may not be, uh, you know, you know, as, as old as some of the coaches that are in LA, you know, that's also coached, I mean, with the Chargers that are also, you know, been coaching for a long time. So maybe just, you know, that, but in terms of the people and the uh, organization, man, just, just, just great organizations and, and excellent people. And, uh, and I've been extremely blessed because a lot of guys don't get those opportunities to be around such good people, on, you know, on both, both organizations. So it's awesome. I know Frost had a, had a fun question for you regarding both defensive lines in these organizations. So go ahead, Frost. Yeah, so I'll go ahead and ask you this one. So you called me Hollywood growing up because I went to USC and when we were, you know, the Bengals, yep. all you you just kept talking about. You saw Hollywood and L.A. and this, That's that, right. and the other. Yes, uh, you probably took a pay cut to come here, all that stuff. I remember all that. <laughs> So I got a question for you. Which you is know, true. Knowing that – I know, right? Hey, are we really talking like that? So anyways – you being a defensive line coach for both squads here in LA, right. who's the more Hollywood D line? Man, you know, um, and, and and let the fans hear your uh, definition of Hollywood, so that I can make sure that I'm explaining this right. I don't want to take anything for granted. You learn those things as a coach, you know. Don't take anything for granted. So, what do you want me to truly uh, explain here, Frost? Hollywood, who's shining more? <laughs> Who has more chains? Who, obviously, I know certain guys on your different teams have a lot more money, you know, but right. who's shining? Who, who, who's who at the clubs? Who's getting in in the front of the line? Who has to wait? What's going well, on? That, that I wouldn't know, Frost, because I don't necessarily, you know, put myself in position to, to hang out with any other guys from that standpoint. So I would only know what goes on around the facility. And, uh, and I think it's probably a parallel when you turn, you know, just from uh, – you know, kind of observing uh, as guys walk in and out of meeting rooms or visit me in my office, uh, you know, just they're, 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 they all shine. You know, I think they all shine. They all, they both, both groups have uh, their fair share of uh, Hollywood, if you will. Uh, but, you know, so I, 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 that's a difficult question for me because I don't want to get, you know, I don't know the, the person uh, from that standpoint. I don't know. Man, don't give me that. Hey, yeah. so who's Hollywood and whose neighborhood? If we're going to go, there's two hoods. 
Who's Hollywood and who's neighborhood? And that's the Chargers and Rams. Same I mean, answer. AD's got his own YouTube channel. He's already blowing up on that. So that's that's kind of Hollywood. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's that's pretty Hollywood. You know, he's a stud. He's different. You know, he's he a different, different dude, man. He's definitely Hollywood. You know, Melvin Ingram got a little swag to him too. You know, Joey Bosa got a quiet, him, got a quiet, quiet. Uh, you know, you know Hollywood. You know, style about him, and uh, you know, then Brandon Meebane is a quiet. You know, Hollywood guy who's a veteran guy who done things the right way. Love you know, it, and so things of that. You know, then you got Michael Brockers and, and AD. You know, the two veteran guys in, in, in this group, and and uh, both of those guys do things the right way. Man, I, I just I'm telling you, I'm just been extremely fortunate to be around good, good people, great young men, and uh, these guys that just made my life and my job easy. That's great. Let yeah, me have, go ahead, Ryan. I was just saying, let me ask. Well, did you have a follow up on that or were you no? Moving? Go ahead. Okay. Without you don't have to give too much. Well, obviously, you're super proud of all the guys you coach, or you wouldn't be coaching them. But is there a, a lesser known? Obviously, not Aaron Donald, not Michael Brockers. A lesser known guy, an Ebucam, a Okoronkwo, who someone that's put in just a ton of work this offseason that you are excited for fans to see kind of blossom this year. Now they can maybe take a bigger role. You know, um, I think a lot of those guys. You know, just from what you've been able to observe, or what we've been able to observe, and kind of from a communication standpoint over Zoom, it seems like all the guys have really put in some quality work. You know, because uh, Coach Doc Rivers spoke to the team, I remember, and he was just speaking about uh, some of the things that he told his team about just winning the weight. You know, this this whole COVID deal is different for everyone in the world, man. And I think that stuck with me when he was just talking about winning the weight. This is a big waiting period. No one knows when it's going to start and if we're ever going to get back and that whole deal. And to not take advantage of the opportunity that's laid before you, whether that be uh, better yourself as a, as a human, whether that be to develop, you know, better relationships with your friends and families and, you know, spend quality time, spiritual relationship, whatever it is, you can win this weight. And so I think that really hit our team in a different way. And, uh, and so uh, with that being said, man, uh, from what I've been able to hear, you know, these guys have been working their tails off and I'm excited about all of them. You know, we got Leonard Floyd coming over from Chicago, who I'm excited about. Uh, you know, Samson, you mentioned, who's a guy who, works his butt off, goes hard all the time, you know, very smart uh, football player, you know. And so, you know, along with the, you know, the, the young guys and obviously the guys up front with, you know, Michael Brockers and AD and Sebastian and, you know, that whole D-line, Greg Gaines, those guys. I mean, we're, we're I'm excited, you know. We, we got a good group of kids, man, that, that I'm looking forward to, uh, to uh, seeing how, how these guys, uh, you know, perform this year. That's powerful, man. You got Doc Rivers, you know, dropping gems on you guys like that. You know, he's a legendary coach, player. And, uh, you know, that that's just spoke gospel to me. You know, win the weight. No and that's huge. You know, I think a lot of people need to do that and take that approach to it and no don't doubt. sit idle, you know. And there's a lot to, to be done. There's a lot you can work on that's right, yourself. Cool. And, you know, spending time with your family and all yes. those things are really what's uh, important. And no that's the one thing that I learned throughout this no, whole no. pandemic is that, you know, what's really important is just spending that right. quality time, you know, and yeah. plugging in. So uh, shout out to Doc Rivers for that. I'm still shout a Laker fan. No, I'm a no, Laker I'm fan, but I'm, I'm a Laker fan. Brian, Brian, AD, baby, but shout out to Doc. I appreciate you. You know, I'm talking about, hey, you know, <laughs> but, you know, I appreciate the gym. Um, um, Coach Henny, let me ask you this question. So how is it actually coaching one of your teammates? You know, big wits out there. Right. And when you're, when you're going through like a pass rush drill, if he even does them these days, <laughs> not, you know, I, 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 yeah, he doesn't do that. I know he don't. But um, how's it coaching him being, you know, the authority you know, in that? Right. It, it's, it's awesome because it, it's so cool. You know, when you got guys that, that you actually came in with and, you know, but he's so old now, it just makes me feel old. It's like, gosh, dang it, dude, if I was still playing, this is what I would feel like or look like. Or, you know, but <laughs> Whit, Whit, Whit looked pretty damn good for his Yeah, opinion, for you know? how he so, takes care of himself, yeah. The way he takes care of his body, man, that's why he's able to play so long, you know. And so, I mean, it's just – it's it's weird, you know, but it's a good thing. It's like, wow, he's so mature and he's just so much different from a mental standpoint than a lot of the young guys that you would see. And you can see why. You know, the guy's been through a lot, he's played a lot of ball – and, but, you know, it's it's fun because we get to talk shit, you know, and, and kind of 
you know, you know, you know, it's, it's, it's go back and forth. You know, can go mean? back and forth, and, and and it's a good, you know, positive vibe on the football field where you can encourage guys to do this, do that. Hey, let's check this out. Let's see if you do this, blah blah blah. You know, and all those things, and, and it just makes the uh, competition, you know, that much better. So yeah, that's uh, huge, you know, man. He, he's he's awesome to have around, man. And, you know, it's it's been really good. Yeah, because you know he's such a leader. You know, obviously our class we came in, uh, we had a lot of guys that. Are, you know, are very valued in locker rooms, you know, even like when we're speaking on, look what you're doing right now and how huge of an asset you are because your experiences and, you know, not being too much older than these guys and, you know, the the reference there is with, he's still playing and, you know, so that's huge, man. That's huge. And uh, I think uh, Wit's so valuable there that, you know, they signed him for a three-year extension, you know, that just says enough, you know. Um, That says a lot. You know, we're going to get Big Willie on here to, you know, talk about how he raised him. That's another, you know, yeah, see, you laugh. Right <laughs> we're going to get Big Willie on here, and he's going to talk how he raised him up and for that longevity. But, you know, it's just huge. It says a lot about, you know, um, the people that recruited us to be at the Bengals, and that that, that class was very special uh, no people. Um, speaking on that class, I, I got one more thing to ask you about that. <clears throat> so in your journey with football, I know you've come across – many players and a lot of great coaches, you know, one specifically I want to talk about is Jay Hayes, right? You know, Jay is a father figure for a lot of us, a great mentor. Um, Can you tell us what you've learned from Jay over the years? Do you still tap in with him? And do you still use any of his coaching techniques? Oh my God. You know, Jay, Jay is such an awesome guy. was like you said, a father figure. I mean, Jay was just such a mentor and a father figure with me for me, and uh, and it's and it's it's awesome because you know he just remind me and just have helped me so much more than he even realized just right. from that experience that I've had with him, whether it be the relationship that he and I personally had that was just totally different, probably from you know a relationship that he could have had with another player on a team, but it was genuine, you know, and that was something that you can't fake, coach, you know, and I think that's so important nowadays to be able to touch your players. Right, whether it's a, a guy that's drafted or a guy that's undrafted, and to treat them all the same and to be genuine, but also want everybody to get better and there's no agenda. You know, and oh, so yeah. when you can feel that, uh, you know, Jay stands for that, man. And that's why I got the utmost respect and love for him. You know, even when I was just coaching in college, man, he would uh, still communicate with me and you know, and make sure I'm doing this and doing that and checking in with me. He, you know, he read articles about recruiting and things of that nature. And he would always been there to support me, you know, still talk to me from a, uh, from a uh, technique, you know, things that we talk about and, you know, how to attack protections. I mean, we still have dialogue, you know, all the time, consistently. Right. I talk to Same. Jay at least, you know, you know, once every two weeks, you know, yeah. sometimes more than that, depending on what's going on. But you know, he's a guy that that always be in my life, man. I love him to death, and then I'm so fortunate and extremely, you know, blessed to have uh, ever had that time with Jay. Yeah, same man. He's so instrumental um, with getting me to Cincinnati, hanging in there with us both, you know, and uh, no and really helping us grow and and, and understand football. Um, Jay, by trade, his his mom was an educator. I know yes. you know that a lot of people don't know that about Jay Hayes, and he really took that approach of really being detailed and explaining things and, you know, looking over our shoulder and making sure we had our notes done correctly, making sure we were focused. And and you touched on it earlier. Each person you coach is different, right? Mm -hmm. So each single person that you, you know, some people need to get on that board and do it themselves. You need to, you know, tell them, you know, no, move the little triangle over a little bit more. That's That's a seven. This is a six, you know, they may have called it this when you're in college somewhere, but this is what the terminology here and learn it, write it down. You know, and um, I, I forever, like I'm saying, I'm grateful, you know, to be under him in that sense that, you know, he taught me a lot of stuff about who I wanted to be as a player, no you know, um, and to be proud of it, be proud of our work and work together and the common goal. And we, you know, we had some great D-lines that we played a part of and he didn't get any of the credit for that, but he kept that glue together. No question. You know? He was a perfect mix of all of us, you know what I mean? He could he could touch us on stories. He would talk about his 
upbringing and, you know, in school and his time in Idaho and him and his brother. And, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, those are great stories, right? Like, and I think we didn't really appreciate it that much when we were in there. We were like, Jay, what are you talking about? That's right. right? And, you're young and you're thinking of this, you're thinking of that. And, and, right. and but, but that's what I mean. It's those things that's prepared me because I even view my room different because I know what this kid's probably doing. So it's uh, even that experience with Jay could allow me to, you know, hey, it may be worth a, a piss break right here. Excuse my language. Hey, you know, this we might need to take five guys, you know, because you want a guys to stay fresh and things of that nature. And you can talk to them about life. And, you know, we never just dive, dive, dive exactly into football instantly. You want to get guys a chance to ease into it and just hear from them sometimes. And I think Jay gave us that platform uh, to keep the room loose to where we truly had a tight knit group. And that's what's, uh, what what I've uh, you know really appreciate about them and some of the things that I also uh, been able to kind of you know take that away if you will. Yeah, absolutely. Shout out Jay Hayes, you know the Hayes family. Coach, man. His nephews out there playing for the Pelicans now. You see that? Oh yeah, you know getting it in. Yeah, Jackson Hayes, man. Watch Jackson out for the young kid. He's a baller. Getting it in. Yeah. Yep. That right, was great. Well, the other and the other Hayes was uh, in the XFL, right? With the Battle Hawks, right? Same yeah, that's his dad. That's Jackson's dad. Yeah. Well, Jonathan Hayes. Jonathan. Jonathan pretty, uh, Hayes. pretty impressive family there. Uh, yeah. All tall. Oh, shit. Just big old dudes, man. Big, <laughs> big dudes. <laughs> awesome. Awesome people. Great I'm family. Curious. I'm curious, Coach. When you, you know, after your, your playing days were over and you wanted to get into coaching and you go from, you know, the big stage of the NFL and then you end up at a small school in Georgia to begin your kind of coaching career, what was right. it like going from, from the top of the top big stage to really being back down at the bottom, you know, really starting. From Man, the top Ryan, I'm so glad you asked that question because when I tell my story to people, man, I'm telling you, it, I really enjoyed that. Here's the deal. And this is why I want anybody that's listening out there, young coaches or guys that, you know, this is what, you know, this was my mindset, Ryan. So I appreciate you asking that. Uh, when I left, when I got done, first of all, we were playing. I remember Frost used to always be like, you know, you're asking, you want to be a coach. You know, he used to always mess with me and say stuff like that to me. And I already knew the, I already knew that about myself. I, mean, I knew that's what I wanted to do. Uh, mm -hmm. just wasn't thinking about it at the time because I thought I'd play 10 years as well. And, you know, and when that didn't happen, it was like, okay, well, shit. You know, it wasn't, it was easy for me because I knew what I wanted to do. I knew what I loved. It was just going about doing it the way that I had to go grind. You know, and I come from the grind. If you just know my background, where I was born and raised in New Orleans, Louisiana, you know, lost my mom when I was nine years old, never met my dad a day in my life, you know, was the oldest of a brother and a sister, you know, and, and, and was able to make it out of that, uh, along with all of the other distractions that could have pulled you back and was the first one to go to college and get a scholarship and first one to graduate from college. So there were things that were extremely important to me and my family you know, uh, and so I wanted to achieve those things. But when you talk about my transition from player and going, you know, in the NFL, blah, blah, blah. And then now, you know, trying to coach. Well, I thought I want I went back to Georgia Tech first because that's the school I uh, went to. Mm -hmm. So I tried to go and be a graduate assistant there. Well, there was nothing open. You know, I'm mean, not going to just get rid of somebody to hire you because you're ready to coach at this time. It's not you know, it don't work like that. I'm back. So I'm uh, back. Hey, hey, make a spot for me. Nah, bro. It don't work like that. And so, you know, I was fortunate to have the opportunity to go down to Georgia Military College with Coach Burt Williams, man. Burt's still there now, still the head coach. He's the athletic I mean, he's everything at Georgia Military College. It was awesome. So he gave me my first opportunity. But I the the thing that really that you know really helped me and I I truly feel like it was just a gift from God. I was uh I was excited to go there, right? And I was also excited about uh, just being there and doing everything. Because when you're there, what people don't understand in the junior college, dude, you're, you're the strength and conditioning coach as well as the position coach. And you may be coaching two positions. Like I was the safeties and the outside linebackers coach. I mean, holy shit. So I got to make this tie together. You know, that's a triangle here, guys. Hey, <laughs> so it's all of that. You know, you got to do that. You're the uh, you're, 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 you're strength and conditioning you're, uh, you know, you're, you're doing you're equipment, coach. you're, you're painting coach. the field, you're backup coach, you know, so I'm painting the grass, we do the logos on the field and cut, I mean, it's everything. And so you're wearing multiple wow. hats, but that truly 
prepared me prior to me getting the uh, graduate assistant opportunity at Oklahoma State University. And, you know, my heart was just pure there. I truly wanted to help those young men, you know, get scholarships. Like we would take bus rides you know, from Atlanta to, you know, you know, uh, Long Island, New York, and then go to, you know, the week after we go into uh, Boston. And then, you know, I mean, everything was on the bus. Oh, you know, and, 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 and my heart was just, you know, it was just pure, man. And I was excited about those guys. And then, you know, so, so on and so forth, you know, from that standpoint, it was just, you know, I got the opportunity to go to Oklahoma State University and I felt like I was more prepared, uh, you know, as a, as a young coach going into a graduate assistant situation because of the things that I had learned and my experiences at JUCO that allowed me to have success at Oklahoma State right out the gate. And so I'm, I was just thankful for those experiences. It was awesome, man. Yeah. Well, it shows because, I mean, you went up the ranks quick. I mean, what, four years and you're already with the char- – four or five years and you're assistant D-line with the Chargers? That's quick. It's crazy. It's crazy, man. But when you're going through the, through the process, it felt like it was – it felt like forever, man. You know, you just don't see those things coming. So just stay with it. Stay with it. Work your tail off. Do things the right way. Treat people the right way. And stay connected. You know, if you can stay connected with people, but genuine and not just like nag people off the fact because you think that's cool to do. No, it's a genuine deal. People don't feel that, man. You know, real relationships, you know, are real. <laughs> you know, and, and everything. It, 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 it's everything. everything. You know, and so, and I was just blessed, man. You know, you know, I, what God has for you, I truly believe he has for you, but you got to put yourself in position to receive those blessings. And, you know, and I, I'm just thankful that, that it worked out for me, you know, the way it did. Yeah, we're thankful that it worked out for you too, man. No doubt, man. I appreciate you, dog. But e, I got another question for you. This is going to be my last question because I know I'm keeping you from getting on the board and, you know, getting some homework or something to these guys. Um, or get in the way of your preparation for training camp, which we're yeah. excited that you guys get to do. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of guys that I've talked to, you know, obviously playing and, you know, the guys, you know, you have all these intimate conversations in the locker and the things they want to do post-career. And, you know, if, it, if this doesn't work out, I want to do this. And uh, it, it brings me to the coaching. And, you know, you – already knew, like you said, I used to tease you about it because you used to answer every question. You knew every, the linebackers jobs because you went in that room for a little while, you know, what the DBs had to do, you know, you were on it on specialty, you knew everything. So I was like, you know, when football's done, you're, you're, you're a coach, you're coaching. Right <laughs> that was already given. <laughs> guys that are a little intimidated because they don't see a lot of ex players as coaches. You know, there's some, um, yeah. ex players, but in, other leagues, you see more head coaches and, mm-hmm. and you know, big-time positions as mm-hmm. coaching. But in our league, we don't see that as much. What do you tell these guys? And if there's any advice for them to if they want to get into coaching, what would you say? Man, that's an awesome question because I, I've, I've had a buddy, you know, I've, I, it's crazy because I just was talking to a guy who played like eight years in the league and great friend of mine, and I know you know him. I won't say his name, but, um, you know, and his deal is it, it's it's – it's that, you know, he's kind of, you know, like, man, it just don't seem like a lot of guys that played her in the league and blah, blah, blah. Well, one of the deals is, is that a lot of some guys that, that have played, they, I, I get it. You know, you kind of went through it and you may have, you may be in a situation where financially it's, it's okay for you and, you know, whatever that, that deal is, but you know, you just got to be all into it. You can't be one foot in and one foot out. And so that's what I would tell guys, like, you know, whether you got, you know, you're financially able and you're good. Shit, I didn't. Ha- I, I was still willing to go to JUCO. You know, I was still willing to go to, you know, Oklahoma State and go, you know, work on my master's degree and things of that nature. And so you have to be committed to this. You can't be one foot in and one foot out. If you're going, oh, I, oh man, I, I only get a job in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in California because that's where I live. So I only want to coach for the Chargers or the, or the, or the Rams. Like, the fuck you mean? You know, you, you, you got to coach. If you got to go Anywhere. to Western go. Illinois, you got to go your butt to Western Illinois. People don't know. I went to Western Illinois for four days before I took the job at, at University of Texas in San Antonio. That mm-hmm. was after I left Oklahoma State. I was just there for four days because I was blessed to get the next job that was already kind of in the process, and that happened. And then, you know, what, shit, now I got to turn around. I got to resign. I got to, you know, but, but I was, that's all in. Right. It's all in though. And you gotta be willing to do that because it ain't gonna be 
you you're not people are starting to see now the fruits of your labor when you're in, in it, when right. you're in a position and it's stuck but that, that's a process just like everything we do you're working out in the off season you know for the season that process yeah. that preparation that story that got you there right. is the same deal when you're you know transitioning in, in you know into coaching but some people may be quicker some people may be longer you don't know what your story is going to be but your right. mindset has to be whatever it is, I'm all in. Got it. You know? And if that's the case, man, it, it'll work out for you. I mean, that's it a really message will. for guys, you know, because like I said, you know, like you know, too, a lot of guys are discouraged about it because they don't see a lot of uh, right. us in those seats. And, right. um, you know, you're a true testament of being all in. You, you know, that's the type of player you were, passionate about football, like I introduced you uh, to start this show. And, um Thank you for dropping this knowledge on us, man. You know, you're my brother for life. No, uh, you know what time it is. You know, we're going we to do this more. We're going to wrap. And, you know, hopefully every week of the season, you can drop some gems on us and give us a little update on how the guys are feeling and, you know, not when it crosses the line, but just enough. No question, man. Count me in, man. I so appreciate you, Frost, man. You're my dog. I got mad love for you, Ryan, man. It's great to meet you. Thank you very much for having me. You know, this is awesome what you guys are doing. I love it. <laughs> it's big time right here, man. Hey, it, it was a pleasure. It's so awesome to meet you. And, you know, I got one send-off question. It's an easy one. More What's push-ups. That? What's that? More push-ups. You were McVeigh. Oh, man, actually, I do out. this. I do this. <laughs> I co- Coach got me. Does he? Oh. No, I, hell no. I do this. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's awesome. I'm, I'm, all, I'm all for the challenge. Though. Well, that's great. Uh, Coach E, is there anywhere they, um, these people out here in L.A. can follow you? You have a Twitter? Yeah, I do. Uh, you know, on Twitter, I'm Coach underscore Henny, C-O-A-C-H underscore Henny, H-E-N-N-Y. You know, and then on uh, IG, is easy, does it, 5-0, you know. Follow that's me. him. You know, I just, I just to make sure my guys are good. I, I, I you know, I, I don't really uh, – you know, get into craziness, but uh, I enjoy, you know, the things that are going on, the positive vibes and things that are going on good around the city and and uh, and in the sports world. So, so appreciate you, Coach. Well, hey, Coach, it was a pleasure. I can't wait to get to know you more. Stay uh, stay healthy, and we can't wait to watch you guys on Hard Knocks. It's going to be fun. You know, it's going to be awesome, man. I'm looking forward to it, and, uh, you know, can't wait to get back on the show with you guys. All right, man, what an awesome interview that was with, with Coach – Coach Henny, as you guys call him, awesome dude. Yeah, man, he's so humble and just a, a great dude. You know, they, they got a great le- leader uh, in that defensive line room, you know, with the X's and O's and the guy that's actually played the sport. And, you know, he's one of the best to ever come out of Georgia Tech. Uh, and it's just a heck of a guy. And uh, those are the type of guests we got to keep coming. Oh, yeah. yeah. We'll get him. They'll be get excited. Everyone out there listening, we'll get a bunch. I wanted to ask you, we didn't talk about it during the interview, but how many years did you guys play together? Was it pretty brief? I think three. We were in Cincinnati three years together, and uh, Eric battled some injuries. But uh, like I said, uh, he's he was coached from the day he got there. He dissected the playbook, uh, the techniques, everything he could do to, to be the best pro he could. And um, he did it on and off the field. So, again, very thankful to have Eric come on here and shed some light. Yeah, and I love the fact, you know, going from – his NFL days, then that back down to the bottom, building himself up, taking bus rides across the country. It just just shows the hard work, dedication it takes to become an NFL player. And then after the NFL, what you have to do to really, you know, progress your career and whatever you want to do afterwards. So an awesome inspiration and awesome guest. So so thanks, Frosty, for getting that on. All good. This is what I bring to the table. That's right, baby. That's right. We're going to have him back. So all those Rams fans out there looking for good Rams insight, we, uh, we'll have him back on during training camp and you know we have a l- bunch of players lining up got a big one next week i don't want to give it away i just want to tease it got a big big player uh, i'll just say hall of fame player we'll leave it at that hall of famer coming on the show um but frosty where can everyone uh, uh, find you at on the socials you can find me at the organic frost and that's on twitter instagram and facebook Perfect. I'm Ryan Dyrud, L-A-F-B, on Twitter, or Ryan Dyrud on Instagram. Uh, email us on the show. We love reading your questions. Didn't do any email questions this week. Just had a you know, longer interview, but uh, email us at podcast at LAFBnetwork.com. Love to answer any of those questions there. Chargers, Trojans, and Bruins fans, don't worry. We got you covered next week, too. We'll get some topics going uh, for you. I know this was a Rams-heavy show, but, but uh, there you go, repping the USC flag going, uh, Frosty. But um, thank you all so much. Stay h- safe. Stay healthy. This is the LA Football Podcast. Have a great week, and we'll talk to you next week.